Well, welcome once again to this special week of prayer for vocations at the Daily TV Mass. I am very delighted that this uh, tradition continues, uh, praying for vocations as we prepare for Good Shepherd Sunday, which is World Day of Prayer for Vocations. So this week we will hear reflections from priests, from a bishop, from a deacon and married man. Uh, we will explore the gift of vocations in the church and we will pray together for an increase in vocations. Once again, uh, my name is Father John Perdue and I'm happy to be here as a director of vocations. Much of my life is dedicated to this work, helping young people who are discerning God's call in their lives. And I look forward uh, each year to the day when not just me and other vocations directors, but the whole church turns her attention to the gift of vocations. And among those who uh, are turning their attention is our Holy Father, Pope Francis. Uh, maybe you know, maybe you don't, but Pope Francis issues a message each year for World Day of Prayer for vocations. Um, it wasn't, uh, it's not a long message, but it's full of, uh, of meaning and, and good insights. And there were several points that really kind of resonated with me in my work and my experience with vocations. And uh, I thought I'd just share one of them. Uh, one point that particularly struck me was the Pope's desire to see a transformation in the thinking of our young people about vocations. To get more specific, uh, Pope Francis desires that young people will see vocations as liberating, as freeing, not as confining. And so I'll read for you a short quote from Pope Francis. Pope Francis writes, The Lord's call is not an intrusion of God in our freedom. It is not a cage or a burden to be borne. On the contrary, it is the loving initiative whereby God encounters us and invites us to be a part of a great undertaking. He opens before our eyes the horizon of a greater sea and an abundant catch. Why did this resonate with me? Well, in my experience, I think it's true that many Catholic youth, when they consider even the possibility of God being a part of their decision-making about their lives, about the direction that their life will take, um, they're put off by this notion. They're not put off because um, they're afraid of the loftiness of what God may call them to, or they're afraid of the risk that the adventure of God's will will entail. Rather, they're put off because they think that God will stifle their freedom. They think that it will be stuffy and boring to follow God. They, when they think about following the will of God in their lives, they don't think about the analogy of putting out to sea in a sailboat or of scaling a mountain. Uh, and this is something we have to work on as a church because the truth is that walking through life with Christ is an adventure, an adventure of the highest order. It brings us into a quest to see our own lives saved and to save the lives of others, maybe even our family and friends. Life in Christ is a mysterious life, a full life and a very meaningful life. And yet the image I think that many of our young people have when they think of vocation of God's call in their lives is a lonely priest sitting in a dusty church, twiddling his thumbs and hoping that someone will come today and visit the church or some variation on that theme. We have to work on this. Where does it come from? Where does this, uh, this notion that life in Christ is boring come from? Well, I think it, it, it comes, the original thought that gave rise to it is, is the idea that commitment and structure in our lives, rules, if you want to call them rules, limit freedom. Let me explain a little bit. What do I mean? Young people have often been led, and I, I'm not pointing any fingers, I don't know, you know the, all of where this notion comes from, but they've been led to believe that commitment and structure in your life takes away your freedom. And that's dangerous because life in the church does require of us commitments. We are committed as Catholics. We, we commit ourselves to Sunday Mass, to prayer. We commit ourselves to a particular moral code by which we will live our lives. This is all true. Is it true, though, that commitment and structure limit human freedom? No, of course it is not. Since the time of St. John Paul II, the church has been fighting against this false idea, but it still remains widespread. 
And so it needs to be said again, and I invite the help of uh, the Daily TV Mass community, any young people that you have influence on in your lives, help them know that structures and commitment in your life do not limit freedom. The commitment of a yes to God with all of the things that that entails, all of the things he will ask me to do as a result, bring great depth of freedom. They bring purpose, they bring joy, uh, they satisfy the desires of our hearts. I'd like to offer a small analogy just to help bring this point home. I am a hockey player. Uh, in fact, I've been blessed recently to be a part of the resurrection of the Flying Fathers hockey team. Uh, some of you will remember the Flying Fathers. We're a team of hockey-playing priests who play games to raise funds for charity. But when I reflect back on the beginning of my playing of hockey, when I was just learning, it was possible that I would have been pushed away or put off by all the rules I had to learn. I had to know what offside was, what icing was, uh, how many men are on the ice at a given time, what kind of body contact is permissible and what kind is not permissible. There were and there are a lot of rules in hockey. But those rules make the game possible. It would be chaos without rules. Once learned and internalized, those rules are rarely thought of. I don't think of them as I play now. They're a part of, of playing hockey. The best hockey players in the world do not feel inhibited or restricted in any way by the rules of the game. They feel very free while they are playing. Success in the game of hockey requires commitment and it requires the observation of norms or rules. And hockey well played leads to an experience of freedom out there and of joy. I offer this as a small example intended to help us believe that the commitments that God asks of us, the vocations he calls us to, with all of their structures, lead to freedom and joy. And a final note, what does this have to do with us, the TV mass community, most of whom are settled in our vocations and have been for some time? Well, as we're praying for vocations, I'd like to ask you to make a special part of your prayer this intention that young people will not fall into the lie that commitment inhibits freedom. We can sometimes wonder in our homes, what in the world can I do to change the tide in, in society, to, to increase vocations? Well, we can use this week to envelop our young people in prayer. We can pour out upon them our spiritual patrimony. We can offer our spiritual inheritance that we have garnered over the course of maybe decades, and we can give it to them in a special way during this week of prayer for vocations.